what's up guys um, I'm gonna do a video uh, on the 4th of July uh, one of the times that I almost died I've been saved from death uh, quite a few times uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ quite a few times and I'm thankful that I'm able to tell uh, my story so this was back in I want to say around keep in mind guys I've done so many drugs that my dates get a little like mixed up you know what I mean um, so if you hear um, if you hear me contradict myself in dates it's because I don't fully remember but what I do remember it was on the 4th of July and I had been doing meth for approximately a week um, not heavy meth because my, my body is very sensitive to meth um, but if I have benzos and if I have clonopins and if I have uh, Xanax uh, to calm me down uh, meth is fun for me because usually what happens is I do meth and then I get so I get so geeked out that um, I get these massive panic attacks but if I have clonopins and Xanax or some, some sort of benzo, any type of benzo, um, it'll always pull me out of it and I'm always able to feel normal and, you know, get sleep and basically quit whenever I want. Like, um, it enables me to kind of control the meth. Um, and that, that's what I liked about benzos. Uh, so I had, I had ran out of benzos, um, halfway into uh, my meth trip and I didn't know where to get more this was back in I want to say like around 2010 maybe 2009 um, and I didn't know a lot of people I only had one connection for clonopins and she used to give me her prescription every month and um, it was I had already taken the whole prescription and there was still a couple weeks to go until I would uh, get my new prescription so um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know where, where to get anymore. So, um, I'm doing math for, for about a week and I'm, I'm half, I mean, uh, I'm doing math for about a week. Halfway through the week, I run out of clonopins. And I know that's, a, that's kind of dangerous for me because if I don't have landing gear, something to calm me down, um, my body kind of like freaks out. Um, and it always does this, okay, guys? Like, I knew it would do this, but I can always usually find an outlet, like, um, what would be my outlet? I'm trying to think. Um, I guess, like, I guess, like, sometimes I would drink and that would help, or, um, I would just fall asleep and once I fall asleep, I'm able to sleep it off, I guess. I, um, but most of the time, it's usually feelings of intense panic um, until I just, I get so frustrated that I just end up falling asleep somehow. I, I, I don't know how I would get through it. Um, but, um, so I, I'm trying to get back to the story. So, um, I'm on, it's, for, it's the 4th of July and I've been doing meth for about seven days straight. Um, I've been up for seven days getting little cat naps here, like an hour here, an hour there, an hour there, but like nothing substantial. Um, and every time that, um, I start like coming down and, you know, like feeling crappy, if I just take another hit of the meth, I was smoking it. I wasn't shooting it or anything. Um, if I, if I start feeling like crap, all I would really have to do is just take another hit and then boom it would give me that burst of energy and I'd feel great again um but it was getting to the point where I was getting like I was seeing I was hallucinating and I knew that um oh and I was getting like cuts and they weren't healing because I was you know I I could just feel the damage that I was doing to my body so I knew I needed to stop like I had to like get control and you know what I mean put my life <laughs> like somewhat back on track so it's the 4th of July, and um, on the 4th of July, I had done a, I had rented a flea market booth at the Golden West College in Orange County. Now, it's a college, but on the weekends, they turn it into an outdoor flea market, and um, 
I had uh, I had rented a space. Me and this lady, we had rented a space. She sold jewelry, and then I just sold like random stuff. And she had her half, and I had my half, and we just we would sell things, and uh, and we made money. Well, we do this all day. It's hot. It's California. Um, I remember drinking uh, a Monster Energy drink that day, and not sleeping the night before, like, um, you know, getting everything ready. It was very labor intensive too, cause I was um, picking up boxes, loading the truck, unloading the truck. We had to be there by like seven in the morning. And by the time we packed up and left, it was like around four o'clock in the afternoon. Plus I'd been doing meth for a week. Um, and so um, I started feeling a little like, What's the word I'm looking for? I started feeling um, uh, tired and anxious, but I couldn't relax. Like, is, like if I tried to just like close my eyes and uh, kind of just like catnap, my body wouldn't allow me because I just I was so jacked up. Uh, and the caffeine d did not help either. The caffeine uh, kept me awake, um, so it's just like my mind fighting to relax, but my body not letting me and so um, we go back to my friend's house and uh, and I'm there and I'm not feeling good like I'm I start I start getting these panic attacks where like my my hands start be becoming tingly not not completely numb but um but tingly hold on guys I gotta put I'm going to Redondo Beach I gotta put it in the GPS real quick 405 North. Okay. Um, so yeah, when I when I do too much math and I get panic attacks, like my hands get tingly, uh, my feet get tingly, uh, I start sweating, and I kind of just start holding my heart because I just like it almost feels like I'm gonna die, but it, it always ends up going away. Like, but it's. I, this is why drugs are so stupid. Like I knew it would do this to me, um, but I was always able, like, to just stretch it out and, and, and get past it. But this time was a little bit different, and, I, and I'll tell you why. So I'm getting that panicky and uh, wanting to relax. I can't do it. I can't sleep. I'm looking for clonopins to see if I had stored some somewhere. Uh, if I had any laying around anywhere, I could not find any. Um, Oh, actually, I take that back. We ended up finding one. We found a, a two milligram clonopin. And I was so happy because I'm like, even though it's a low, if I was taking like upwards of like eight milligrams, but I knew the two milligram would definitely pull me out of it. So I was so thankful to like, to get it. And so I take it and I'm just waiting for it to kick in. Uh, but but it's not kicking in for some, some reason. So I'm like, all right, um, I can't calm down and I'm getting really panicky and I'm just, I'm not feeling good, like feeling like I'm gonna die. Um, and I'm not a weed smoker, but occasionally I would. Um, so what I did is, oh, I, I got some wine. I remember um, I started drinking a little bit of wine and the wine just intensified my panic. Uh, it wasn't helping, it wasn't calming me down. And so after drinking the wine, I'm, I'm even feeling like even worse. Uh, and so I had some weed, some very potent weed. Uh, it was a half a, it was a half a joint, and I knew, like I knew, I'm very sensitive to weed, and like sometimes weed gives me a panic attack, and sometimes I can handle it, and it's kind, it's sort of like, I don't know when it's gonna happen. I kind of just gotta smoke and <laughs> figure it out. So. I decide, all right, I'm gonna take a few hits off this joint uh, to see if it'll help uh, calm me down, right? So I, I light up the joint. I think I take about three hits, three small hits. And uh, when I did that, I started feeling the high, but immediately, immediately, I knew that I had made a really, really poor decision. Um, and so I smoke the weed and I go into full-blown panic attack. 
but this was not like a regular panic attack. This is like, I've had a couple of these in my life. This was by far the worst case. So like I said, my hands get like tingly and a little bit numb. Well, what starts happening is uh, my hands start seizing up. And uh, so like, here's my hand, right? My hand like starts going like this to where uh, all the muscles are contracting in my hand and it hurts. Like they're contracting uh, and they're not uncontracting and I don't have any control. So that starts happening to my hand, right? And I'm getting scared. Like it's scaring me because I don't have control over my body. My feet start getting tingly and I'm just like, what is good? And I start praying, God, please, please help me, Lord Jesus. God, please, please help me. I'll never do this again, right? Which, which is what I always used to say to God. And I was, I would always lie to God, tell him I'd never do it again and I, I would do it again. And my left hand, my left hand starts seizing up. And same thing, yeah, it's, it's painful, it's just seizing up and uh, all the muscles are, are contracting and uh, yeah, it's getting scary. So this is happening. Keep in mind, I took the clonopin. The clonopin's not kicking in. What actually, I'll tell you what happened. What happened is the clonopin that I found um, must have been years old uh, and it had, it had lost its uh, potency. Because like all the all the numbers were like, um, it was in the bottom of a drawer, and you could tell it was an old pill. I knew it was an old pill when I took it, but um, I've taken old pills before, and you know that they've worked. This one just must have been really old, or uh, or maybe it was the devil. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, the clonopin never kicked in, and so um, my hands are seizing up. It is so scary I'm also having feelings of like the devil I'm feeling like I'm feeling like the devil is telling me I got you now like I, I got you now like you're coming with me like you're, you're coming home and you're not going to heaven you're, you're coming with me and I really felt like I was I was gonna go to hell like um, I hadn't been living for Jesus even though I was a believer and uh, even though I had accepted Jesus as my, as my Lord and Savior, I had fully like turned my back on him by the choices and the lifestyles that, uh, that I was living. And so um, I felt like, okay, like, you know, like I'm, <laughs> uh, this is sort of what I deserve. But I am so scared. I am just pleading with God to, uh, uh, I am just pleading with God to just like to, to help me. So and this is when it starts getting really scary. So then my feet start doing the same thing as my hands to where my toes are curling up just like my um, just like my hands. And guys, I all of this mentally is like my breathing is starting to get so heavy that I can't control my breathing. So it's hands, feet, breathing. And I am just, uh, like, at any minute I feel like I'm going to die. My, the, my heart rate was so high, you could see my shirt beating. Like, like not like, not like a little silhouette kind of moving. Like, no, my shirt is moving up and down. And uh, I, I tell my friend's mother, like, you, you got to bring me to the hospital. Like, and, and guys, I don't go to the hospital. Like, I, I hate going to the ER. Like, I... I I can't do it. I, uh, no matter what, um, I don't like going to the hospital. So, um, but then I realize how serious it is this time. And so, um, I go to the hospital, um, and, oh, and on the way to the hospital, I can feel these, uh, like the, uh, the, the muscles that are contracting, I can feel it in my chest and my chest wants to contract the same way that my hand is contracting and I can feel it. It's like, it's, it's like moving and I can feel it. Like my chest wants to do it. And I, and I'm telling myself, I'm like, if my chest contracts the same way that my, that my hands are contracting, I'm dead because it's going to, um, it's going to contract my heart to where my heart's just going to you know, like seize up. So, um, yeah, I, uh, 
and I know, and like, this is not like me, like over exaggerating. Like, like I can feel like this is what's going to happen. If it gets to my, if it gets to my chest, I'm done. And so I'm, I'm begging the, my, my friend's mother, like, please hurry, get me faster. Luckily, like we hit green lights and there was not a lot of traffic. Uh, it was a weekend. It was, um, mid afternoon and luckily there wasn't, um, a lot of traffic so we get to the hospital in where was it uh san juan san juan san juan i don't know so san clemente no um i think it was in san juan capistrano yeah yeah san juan capistrano so we go there we uh we get to the hospital and um when we get to the hospital i start not being able to feel uh my face anymore my face starts becoming numb and I'm telling them, I'm like, hey, like, look at my hands. Like, I can't move my hands. Like, um, I, and I'm, like, screaming, like, pleading, like, you know, and they want to, like, get my insurance. I'm like, no, like, I'm going to die. Like, like, look at my hands. I can't feel my hands. I can't, my, my feet, and I can't feel my face. Like, you guys, like, I, I was trying to tell them I don't go to the hospital. This is the, this is my first time ever going to the hospital. Like, please help me. And so they do. They, 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 um, they rush me in immediately. Um, and they, they hook me up to the, uh, the EKG machine. Well, I have this thing with EKGs where if you hook me up to an EKG, like, let's just say I haven't done any drugs and I'm completely sober. If you hook me up sober to an EKG, it's going to give me a panic attack because you got all these things beeping and like, and the, the lines going, you know, um, I just, I can't handle just, uh, uh being sober doing, doing an EKG. And I asked him, I said, please don't put those wires on me. Please don't do that. I said, it's going to make it worse. I said, I can't handle all those, those wires on me. And they're like, no, we've got to do it. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, and I'm, I'm actually like ripping the wires out as they're trying to put them on me. And, um, it's just, it's so bad. And I'm like praying, I'm saying the sinner's prayer. I'm like, God, if I die, please don't let me go to hell. And everybody's hearing me say this. And like, uh, and so the nurse comes up to do an evaluation and she's asking me, uh, you know, what's wrong. And I tell them the complete truth. Like, I don't lie about anything. I told them, listen, I said, I don't do meth. I said, um, I, I never do meth. I'm not a meth addict. I said, but I said for the last week I've been doing it. <laughs> like, I don't know why I've been doing it, but I just, I decided to do it. I said, cause I didn't, I didn't do meth. Like, um, maybe like once a year, once every couple of years, like I, like I barely ever did meth. Um, and so, but they don't believe me. Where does that say? Uh, okay. I'm going to exit. Um, Hold on, guys. So, uh, darn it. Trying to, okay, so, Hawthorne. All right. Um, so, yeah, so I'm there, and I'm telling the nurse everything, and then they start treating me so bad. Once they find out that I'm, I've done meth, uh, it's all over at this point. Now I'm a drug addict. Uh, they don't want to help me. They don't want to treat me. And um, they got my vital signs on and they had left the room. And then it was like every single doctor and every nurse, because um, the EKG starts beeping, like making this noise. like, And I could tell it was like an alarm. An alarm went off on the EKG. So all the doctors rush in and all the nurses rush in and all of them are just glued to the screen on my EKG. And I'm already freaked out at this point. And I know like they're, they're like, they're getting ready to do, to do something like, like I'm, and what it was is they were getting ready. Um, I think to put, to put me in open heart surgery. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, like that's, that's where I was going. And, um, and the doctor says, I mean, I'm sorry, the nurse, I'll never forget this. The nurse says to the doctor, doctor, I need to give him the shot. Doctor, I need to give him the shot. And the doctor whispers uh, to the nurse, like, he thought that I couldn't hear, but I heard. The doctor says, he's a drug addict. Don't give him nothing. Don't, don't, don't do nothing for this guy. And I'm just like, oh my, keep in mind, guys, I'm in full blown panic. And I hear the doctor saying, don't help him. 
And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And this lady, she heard me saying the sinner's prayer. She heard me crying out to God, like repenting of my sins. And uh, everybody leaves and it's just, um, or no, it wasn't just me and her. It was, but the doctor had left. So it's me and her and some other people. And she says to one of the nurses, she says, I'm giving them the shot. I don't care. I'm giving them the shot. And, um, and so she, uh, she goes to my, to my IV and, uh, she gives me a shot, which happened. Now I know what it was. It was, uh, it was a heavy dose of Ativan, uh, liquid Ativan in IV form. Um, which was what I was trying to do all along <laughs> with the clonopins, you know, like I knew that, that that would help me. Um, and immediately she gives me the shot and I just, I come back to reality and, uh, my vitals are just normal. And, um, yeah, the doctor comes in and, uh, you know, the doctor's like, man, he's like, he's like, you know, he's like, don't do drugs. And I'm trying to explain to him like, doctor, I don't do drugs, you know? And I'm like, I know you hear this probably all the time. You know, but I really don't do drugs. Like, and guys, at, this was at the point where I wasn't like a real drug addict um, yet. <laughs> um, I was more doing. I was I was in my drinking and benzo days at this point. Uh, drinking benzo weed. Um, y yeah, the, the harder drugs, even meth, like was still to come. Like, even though I was doing meth, I was it wasn't something that I did. Um, I was more into playing sports and drinking and partying in the clubs, you know, stuff, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, so that's what happened. And, um, yeah, uh, there's actually a part two to this, uh, um, another instance that happened, uh, where I had a, a panic, attack. not as bad as this one. This one was by far the worst, but, um, yeah, maybe we'll get to that one on, uh, the next video I do. All right, guys, palabra.